It's May, which means it's about to be a planner launch season. If you're anything like me, you're going to be tempted to buy one of like 50,000 planners. And here are a couple questions that we should ask ourselves before buying any of them. Hi, I'm Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper. I talk about creative planning, bullet journaling, and some artsy things like brush calligraphy and alcohol ink. And today I'm talking about how to resist the siren song of everybody's planner launch days. I have been a planner person for my entire life, and if I didn't write it down, I'd forget to do it. And so I've tried a lot of planner systems underneath the sun. They would last me about four to six months before I would move on to the next, thinking that the next thing will be my planner piece. Well, it's certainly expensive lesson to learn, but I continue to learn it. So here are some questions that we should ask ourselves before we fall prey to yet another planner launch. First, why isn't my current system working for me? A lot of times, if we can't answer this question, we're not going to be able to make an informed choice as to what we're purchasing next. And I, I know that a lot of us probably can't predict exactly until we maybe stumble upon something that clicks for some reason, we can't quite put our finger on it. But to go into planner launch season, just trying everything, buying everything um, in order to stumble upon something that might work, you know, if you have the budget for that, that's great, but otherwise you're just going to end up in the same kind of problem where you can't identify what exactly isn't working so that you can find something that does. This was my issue last summer when we transitioned to working from home and during the pandemic, and I kind of just started buying a bunch of other planners just to see what worked, and I got things like the cloth and paper systems, I got the plum planner paper, plum paper, plum paper planners? <laughs> tried them all and I still kind of ended up back at my original system. So it was not until I could identify what wasn't working or I could kind of whittle back down to what was, what would be the solution. Two, what hasn't worked before? So if you look back to all the other planners that you ditched, there might be a common theme or some patterns that reveal themselves to you as to why you aren't using those kinds of planners. And for me, it is rings. I've tried them. I used the Russell and Hazel ring planner system back in college, and I liked parts of it, but honestly, writing up against the rings was an issue for me. And so I've never gone back since, and I've just said, you know what? no rings and that's okay. Similar with horizontal planners, like they're really common and a lot of people really love them, but I just have never been able to click with a horizontal planner. It does not work for my brain. So being able to identify like that didn't work before for a reason, it's probably not going to start now. <laughs> and again, if you wanted to try that out, there are probably some really affordable ways to give it a shot before you commit whole hog into something that's completely new. Like I love that Moxie Life and Passion Planner have different printouts that you can do to try out the system before you commit. And just like clothing, do you already have something similar? And do you need this one? A lot of times, you know, we buy a new planner, the layouts start to kind of blend together and maybe a section is a little bit off or something, but is there a way that you can maybe use washi to create a new section or relabel the section to make it work for just a little while longer or adjust it in other ways? I think one of the major ones for me has been, is this in your budget? A lot of these planners are not cheap, and especially when I started trying out the cloth and paper system, like moving from the bullet journal to more of the uh, disc bound was an investment. There were a lot of parts and you don't buy the whole thing all together. So buying everything a la carte to create a system that was customized to what I wanted it to be took a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of energy. And is that something that you want to spend? on a system. That's totally up to you. But again, when you think about how many hours of work it would take to pay for that system, is it worth that much time in your life? And then what else you could you be doing with that money? So is it worth a trade off? And that is just something that only you can answer for yourself. And as everybody knows, I am moving. So this question rings true for me, which is, can you store it or deal with the work of de-stashing it? As you can see behind me, I've got quite a few things <laughs> in the stationary planner world, and sometimes it is very overwhelming. 
and for the most part there's things that I use regularly and then there's some things where you really have to think about like okay now I have to list it I have to manage the payment for it I have to ship it in order to destash it I have to find new homes for them and it's usually like one piece at a time and is that work worthwhile to you and do you have the space for it I am amazed at the kinds of planner spaces that people have and that's awesome I'm jealous um, but I know for me I don't have a lot of places to store it and that motivates me to kind of ask myself the question do I really want this is it going to be useful do I have a place to have it a lot of these planner companies are really small and lovely people and I know that I want to support these makers in their dreams and doing things that I really appreciate. Are there other ways that you can support these makers? Can you share their posts, their sales, and do a little promo for them? Um, are there other you know, posts that you see on social where you can recommend that shop to that person who's looking to buy something. There are some other creative small ways that we can still support our friends without needing to pay for something or use a system that maybe won't work for you. And then the last one, which I think is honestly the most important one, is is this trendy or is this you? And I think we get swept up a lot in all these people showing and reviewing things. I know I have done a lot of reviews on notebooks and systems. I have a couple even coming out. But being able to discern whether that is something that is actually useful to you and your approach to planning and organization is the key. So being able to look back and identifying what stuff is actually going to work well with your approach will help you differentiate between the frenzy of something new or something that will sustain you. I know when like the Erin Condren Daily Duo came out last year, it was just like everybody was posting about it. It seemed like that was the only planner people were using. And even though I am not like a pre-formatted daily planner, I thought for a long time about trying to invest in one of these Daily Duo planners. It is a strong pull. It's very difficult to push yourself through all of the FOMO sometimes because you know you want to be part of the group and you want to be um, belonging to the the hype of what is being launched and stuff but you know stay steady I know that when like the Hobonichi weeks became a big thing the neutral colorways have become a big thing and if I'm honest with myself I don't like the Hobonichi paper I don't like the size of the Hobonichi Weeks. It is too narrow for my big ass handwriting. And for the neutral colorways, like I'm a color girl. So being honest and accepting what is going to be working for you will, will be so helpful in the long run when you're trying to resist the, the siren song of all of these planner launches coming out. I think we can appreciate them. We can think about and be happy for the people who are using these systems and then return to ourselves and say what is going to be unique and useful to me. I am very imperfect at this. So these are the questions I'm going to be chanting to myself over the next month or two as new things start to roll out. And even if it means adding stuff to cart and then abandoning ship, do that. Do what is going to be helpful to you and your system. I hope that you find your own planner piece by finding peace with yourself. But let me know down below, how do you resist the call of buying new things? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!